Hello Virgo, Virgo Rising, and Virgo Moon people. This is your weekly astrology and card forecast for the week starting October 17th, 2016. And remember guys, the astrology in these uh, weeklies is all about the weekly trends. Okay, so what's going on during the week on a daily basis, or, you know, just the big flavor of the week, the big seasonal shifts and things like that. You're gonna find those in your monthly horoscopes, which, um, luckily, lucky enough, <laughs> is going to be, little cat here there, uh, is going to be out here soon. Actually, we could just put out um, November monthlies yesterday, so that's a good thing. And of course, these are general horoscopes, so if you would like to ever get a personal session with me, you just got to go to my website, integrativemysticism.com. You can always follow the links below where you can schedule a private appointment with me or order a downloadable video file. So what is going on this week with you? Well, in the very, very beginning of the week, just as, I guess you could say, the 16th turns into the 17th, we have a full moon in Aries, in your 8th house of intimacy, shared resources, self-employment income, and we have that full moon conjunct Uranus, currently retrograde in that area. Now, when Uranus is retrograde, you can kind of bet that, you know, the wake-up calls, the spontaneity, the happy coincidences, the upheavals, um, and, you know, the, the big left turns tend to diminish in quantity wherever it goes. And this is the area where it's really diminished in quantity since August. And it does this, you know, from August up until December of every year. It's kind of the universe's way of testing, okay, well, how much do you rely on the external to do it all? But this full moon is very interesting because this is reviving an opportunity uh, to actually relive or reinvent or actually for the first time finally indulge a fantasy that you and your partner or maybe you in a business sense actually turned down or turned away from um, earlier this year. If there was something that you thought you couldn't have, maybe it seemed too expensive, maybe it just didn't seem like the right timing, or it seemed like it was, you know, just too pie in the sky, we have those dialogues and those opportunities being represented this week, and even into early next week, whether, again, it is something for a private enterprise you have, starting your own business, or even indulging some more sultry 18 and up <laughs> types of uh, fantasies you and your partner have had, Again, we're bringing those back on the table this week. Even if you had maybe, you know, turned it down before, maybe you regretted turning it down in the first place. On the 19th, we've got Mars in a tense conjunction with Pluto in your fifth house of your love life, okay? Definitely more like the honeymoon romantic side of things, and your relationships with your children. And when Mars and Pluto come together, it gets really extreme. Um, it has a tendency to kind of go into the overkill place, uh, rhetorically speaking, of course. And that's just kind of the word I've been thrown out there as the paraphrase of that day. There could be a conflict or an argument with a partner or even with one of your children that you don't want to have this win-at-all-costs kind of attitude for, because you can win. You can definitely succeed. You can definitely be the victor here. But in a fight where there should not be a winner or a loser, trying to be the winner can make us the bad guy. So be very careful, the 19th and the 20th, if we do need to have that discussion or we do need to have that butting of heads just to see eye to eye, okay? So what is going on this week with your cards? Well, for your spiritual advice, we have the card of the Ancient. And this card is talking about paying attention to where we can't be coddling people this week, all right? Because sometimes coddling and, and, and babying and all of that kind of stuff does no good. You know, it really doesn't. It might actually only serve to keep a person in a low place, you know? And we certainly don't want to encourage the people to get hooked on coddling behavior or coddling dialogues and things like that. It's nice for comfort, absolutely, but everything in moderation. And the ancient card is talking about knowing when it's time to stop coddling somebody, or maybe it's time to stop coddling a few people, you know, and, you know, we're Virgos, we're supposed to be the ones who are comfortable with, you know, making a point, no matter how much it might wake up the elephant in the room. Just do it nicely, and probably don't do it 19th and 20th. 
For your Earth sector, when it comes to your work and finances, we do have the Page of Cups inverted. This card is very interesting because it talks a lot about great news as far as, you know, money in the forms of just money and currency are concerned. In fact, you may be finding this is quite a lucrative week, but you have to pay attention to where people at the office or people at this new job are perhaps getting a little bit too close for comfort. And sometimes that can happen, you know, where, a, you know, a work friend suddenly turns into a clingy, you know, Klingon type person, or maybe we're in a situation where, you know, a boss or a client is starting to ignore protocol and boundaries and they think they can just kind of call us anytime, night or day. You're going to be feeling a little bit crowded. All right. Now, the nice thing is financially everything's going to be good to go, but when you need to be able to come home from work, you need to be able to come home from work. For your communications with air, when it comes to messages you get from friends and from relatives and all the others in your life, we do have the Three of Wands upright. Beautiful card because, again, this talks about uh, somebody actually going out and seizing an opportunity for you. Uh, in the classical imagery or the classical uh, I guess you could say paraphrase of this card, this would be somebody opening a door for you, somebody actually, you know, showing you your ships are coming in. If you've put your feelers out there for anything, uh, a referral or some kind of connection, whether it's a network connection um, or even just having somebody go out and do you a favor, they have completed their quest <laughs> and the door is open for you. So there is going to be some really nice news coming from somebody you've kind of recruited into uh, your service, officially or unofficially. For your challenge this week with fire, we do have the Ten of Swords inverted. This card is a great card to get inverted, believe it or not, and even as a challenge, it's not that bad. However, when I say it's not that bad, I mean it's not that bad. It can still be difficult, but you have to understand that difficult and bad are not the same thing. Uh, the challenge here is to talk about second chances, giving things second chances, giving things opportunities that you may have again turned down before. What have we been rejecting too much for, from ourselves, or rejecting too much for reasons that might actually be illogical? Uh, because with the Ten of Swords inverted, it's basically pointing to you and saying, Virgo, where might you be a little bit too much of, you know, too easy to turn things down? Um, or maybe too easy to dismiss uh, at this point in time? Because the challenge here is to give something either a second chance, or give something you've dismissed a chance in the first place. For your emotions with water and your romantic life, we've got the Page of Swords inverted. This is a week where you got to be careful. There's going to be a lot going on where people are jumping to the wrong conclusions a lot. And again, the emotions area in this spread also can relate to children as well as lovers, as well as crushes, basically anyone connected um, to that immediate, immediate family, but also, again, very much a emphasis on the, the, you know, your children and your partner or your crush. And when we talk about reaching, you know, bad conclusions or incorrect conclusions, the Page of Swords inverted is basically saying, um, what is going on with conjecture? What is going on with people kind of taking clear evidence and turning it into something else? You know, it's almost like you have the it's almost like you have the blueprints to build a car, but then somebody decides to take the blueprints from that car and take all the parts and build a house. It's not a very good house. And I think that what happens, you know, with the Page of Swords reverse is that we have these misunderstandings happening quite a bit. So, jumping to the wrong conclusion could indicate maybe we think somebody does not like us when they clearly do, or we think that somebody does like us when they clearly don't, or maybe we think that our partner is trying to do something mean when they're trying to do something nice, or our partner takes something personally that we probably didn't mean for them to take personally. When it comes to people jumping to conclusions, the first thing we have to do is dismantle the bad evidence, or the bad math in the evidence. Don't just start getting defensive. So that is your forecast, Virgo. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. And of course, if you'd like to get a session with me, you can always follow the links below or go to integrativemysticism.com.